contemplating what to do with this generator. It is um, probably seven hundred to a thousand dollars worth of parts plus a lot of time to put it back together to be back to where it may or may not work. Or do we get something completely new? So I'm trying to size up our options. It literally size up will, will fit in this space out of the generators. So if you've been following the videos for a while, you may have heard of men us mention some generator problems. Sometimes maybe not with necessarily a polite language. Yeah. So. Uh, in fact, it was the generator dying that morning before we hit the submerged channel marker that had us on kind of a, a bit of a more rushed pace than what we yes. would have preferred. And then our beautiful, wonderful trip up from Miami to Fort Pierce was the big frustration was we could not basically reliably charge our batteries or run the generator. It was just stalling on us continuously. And kind of important because, you know, not just for life comforts, um, but, you know, things like the windlass to bring up the anchor. Otherwise, we're hauling it up by hand. <laughs> yeah, so we need power and we couldn't trust our generator and we had mechanics look at it. We had another mechanic look at it here in Fort Pierce and he's like, you really shouldn't keep throwing money into that old generator. So we have been dealing with this thing since last August. Um, it's one of these things that just browns out, kind of, kind of just stutters, and then it comes back, usually, sometimes uh -huh. not. And um, it, it's not good for the generator, it's not good for the things running on yeah. the generator. And, and odds are, it could be fixed if we spent enough time and enough money on it. The generator has only got 1,600 hours on it. Some people are much. saying it's, it's foolish to get rid of a generator like that, but it's 20 years old, all the hoses on it are falling apart, it needs a full overhaul. Or, and we want a generator we can trust, so we decided to go something new. Right, and the generator that we had on the boat was 12.5 kilowatt hours, right? Is that yeah, 12.5 kilowatts, not hours. Kilowatts, yes. hours, yeah, see. 12,500 uh, <laughs> watts, a huge, 100 amp output. So basically, when they design them for these sorts of boats, they're assuming max load running all the time, yes. and it is way oversized for our needs. Yeah, they want it to, so you could have all three air conditioners, the microwave, and the oven all going at full blast and rig, people wouldn't even have to question that their generator was up for it. Well, we like to manage our power. We don't need a generator. That, and a generator's actually, they use a lot more fuel and they age poorly. They, they don't they don't like to be run at the normal, in this case, that generator would normally be running under a thousand watts of output. It'd be just, just a waste. Right. So, so typically what we have found um, <laughs> is if we need air conditioning, one or two air conditioners running at the same time keeps our coke. Just plenty. plenty cool enough. And uh, we're used to managing our power, and we will be doing lithium and solar um, here. As soon as we get a chance. <laughs> and we want a generator we can trust. So we're getting a generator that is physically and electrically half the size of the one that's coming out, and one that is basically the top notch rated for reliability. So knock on lots of fiberglass. Hopefully, we're going to have a generator that is much better suited to our style of use and because it's physically smaller we're going to get a big storage area um, freed up down here in the lazarette underneath us where the generator and, uh, should be using about 0.3 gallons per hour of fuel which is about a third of what we estimate our current generator is using yeah, so probably less than that but yeah it's probably uh, there's going to be a big improvement in fuel economy so all around should be a good upgrade um uh, we'll share the cost later. Uh, it is a few buck, more boat bucks than we had intended spending on fixing the generator, but I think overall it's going to be worth it. And we've already lost enough time to this stupid thing. Yes. So, so yeah. There were 20 minutes of time and route, 1.7 nautical miles. It's probably reasonable to allow for. So if we leave in 10 minutes, okay, then so we're going to have plenty of time. We can linger in the channel and stuff. And, and we are approaching Cracker Boys. You can see the blue lift kind of over there hiding in the trees. And likely on the dock, that's Captain Craig. Here we go, Cracker Boys Boat Yard. Fort Pierce, Florida, Atlantic side. Got a bay liner, 4788 coming in. It's going to go into the travel lift well right here. I see Eddie, our mechanic. He's the uh, bald-headed fella in the blue outfit. <laughs> He's been working with us on the generator. And the yellow shirt over there is Captain Chris filming us, so any of the footage from the ground will be coming from him. He is a notorious boat watcher. He films people dock. And they said no line handling required here. They have dock uh, boat poles that they will attach to us and handle all that for us. Well, that's kind of nice not to worry about. And you can see the boatyard workers are grabbing the handrails with those poles. That way they can push and pull and align the boat in the travel lift well. Any neutral? 
in neutral. See the strap lifting? The rear strap that will slow the boat down by grabbing the boat. Now the forward strap. the mechanic Eddie throwing some moving blankets on the boat because they're going to remove the old generator, repair the bed that the generator sits upon, and then they'll put a new generator in it. They'll have to come back to put the new generator in place. So, you can see the wheels rolling. These are hydraulically powered wheels on the travel lift machine. Look at the bow of the boat, you might see a hole or light. That's the bow thruster. And the name of this boat is Why Not? And let me swing back to the right. They're going to drive the boat over to that crane, and the crane will lift the generator out. <laughs> uh -huh. Never like ridden in a boat like this ride. before? This section is like a carnival ride. They move fast. They gotta know that they do this. This is yeah. what they do. These cracker boys know what they're doing. Everybody's got cameras waving to everybody. <laughs> and here's Elise, Captain Elise. <laughs> no matter what happens, this is gonna end up on YouTube one way or another. Can't get too rough on the controls because it will bang up, bang down. They're moving the boat. Oh, this is sweet, 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 sweet. So Sean, the guy with the yellow remote control box is actually moving the travel lift and it's coming out. What a deal, what a deal. It's nice when you got a bunch of professionals that know what they're doing. Be bleeding all over your boat. Oh my gosh. We need some paper towels. I don't even know where it's coming from. Right there in your arm. What'd you just do? I pulled these clothes out. I hope they were the right ones. And I had no head in the process. <laughs> Whew, okay, now I think we're all set to put a new generator in. Oh, <sighs> this isn't my new cabin? Um, actually, you fit there very nicely. I could, let's see, I shift this hatch on you. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kiki likes to hang out down there. You guys, it'd be nice. Victory! <sighs> Coming up, Taylor Creek. Uh, approaching our second time at Cracker Boys, which is a do-it-yourself yard, so we're going to be hauled out, and a crane is going to lift a new generator back into our lazarette. Yeah, so meeting Eddie the mechanic, and um, yeah, actually we've been really worried. We got delayed from last week for the weather, and we've been uh, worried about the weather this week. It looked bad all week, but we got a weather window, and Cracker Boy had a window, and it's happening today. So fingers crossed we leave here with the generator in and hopefully hooked up soon.
doing, Chris? Um, trying to figure out how to put a sound shield on our generator, which required shifting it a few inches, but it's only 400 something pounds, so I could do that myself. So why are we installing the sound shield now and not when we <laughs> installed the generator? Uh, Northern Lights was back ordered on all these parts, and so they weren't able to get us, get them to us in time, and we weren't going to wait to put the generator in, so uh, it turned into a, a project for me. Something fun to try. Fun. Your definition <laughs> of fun is sometimes different than mine. Sometimes. <laughs> And yeah, so we've got to build a box around something that would be a lot easier to have done before the generator was in place. Um, but I think it might be possible. So I've gotten the generator. I had to move it a few inches to the side, 400 and something pounds. No big deal. And uh, I've disconnected and reconnected the exhaust and the water intake. And the hard part was getting this side panel attached because the screws to do it have to go in down here where there's about zero space. I think I'm recording upside down. Um, but yeah, down in the corner. So I had to basically shift the generator one way or the other to get the, the side panel on. Side panel is now attached. The, now it's got to start doing the mounts for the fuel lines and the oil lines next. discovered uh, that this valence down here on the bottom of the, the generator comes out um, just far enough that the fittings that uh, we installed when we first installed the generator um, have about that much separation they can't screw on. And I discovered that while fuel was gushing all over me so I'm um, now need to come up with a plan B how to change the fittings potentially need to change some of the hose here Fortunately, I think I have some spare hose, but uh, this is going to be a longer and messier process to get the fuel hooked back up. Which is disappointing because everything else was going pretty well. We don't need fuel though. I uh, you know, maybe we don't. Okay, so we are caught up. The generator is installed. The new sound shield is installed. That turned into a bigger project than we anticipated, in large part because everything had to shift four inches, which means I had to completely disconnect the generator and reconnect it. Um, all my all on my own, which is a, a challenge and kind of fun, um, but a challenge. The, some of the big challenges we ran into, you saw some of this in the video, was the um, fuel fittings, the fuel line fittings here um, would not fit and I had to track down 45 degree angle fittings to replace the 90s and uh, let this route. I had a little bit of a challenge getting the oil line out um, and still hooked up. Um, and then just lots of working in very tight spaces because this would have been a lot easier to assemble the box um, outside of the boat and then uh, install it all in once as opposed to have to build the box around the generator right here. And extra challenging because some of the parts were damaged in shipping. But it came together, it works, and we'll fire it up and you'll actually see the difference the sound shield makes. So I'm um, sure you want to hit the start button. I guess I can hold on. I'll hold this. Already with the sound shield off is about as loud as our old generator was with it on. And now put the lid back in place. Front. Other lid adds a lot more to it. Ah. And there we are. It's uh, the road noise and everything else behind us is uh, louder than the generator, and the loudest noise left is actually the gurgle of the exhaust coming out. <laughs> it's 
extra gurgling with all this weight. Yes. <laughs> now there are um, exhaust separators that would separate the liquid exhaust from the gas exhaust into two separate through hulls. And that would apparently make that completely silent. So that is a potential future simple upgrade. Okay, so I know some of you are gonna have some questions on the video. Um, first one that folks are probably gonna ask is, how are we liking the new generator? And we now have 100 hours on it. We have done our first break-in oil change and we're about to do our second. So we have done a few days of anchored out and right now we are moored in St. Augustine and running off the generator. It has been, so far, awesome and Northern Lights has been awesome customer support through the little you know, helping us figure out the fuel and the damage parts in the sound shield so so far impressed how much did it all cost it was a few boat, boat bucks um, we estimated that to repair the old one we probably could have easily been in three or four thousand dollars in mechanics fees and trying new equipment and rebuilding it and like plus we mentioned time. plus a lot of time even trying to figure that out uh, overall, the generator inst uh, removal and installation cost was $16,000. We prefer 16 boat bucks. It's just a lot more palatable. Um, we did have uh, funds aside for doing projects, so it wasn't a big hit out of our budget, but we'll probably delay some other big projects for us just by a little bit. Um, hauling out was $360 each time. That included time with the crane, so super affordable on the haul outs at Cracker Boys. Uh, the mechanic, he had about 20 hours of labor, plus he supplied a lot of parts, so the total mechanic bill was around three grand. And the gen set and sound shield together was just over 12,000, so that's how it breaks out. Uh, who is the mechanic? That is Eddie. He uses no last name, but he is with East Coast Power Systems out of Fort Pierce. Came highly recommended to us by our friend Captain Chris. And I can definitely say working with Eddie was a true blessing. He was so awesome to have in our space so often loved our cat uh, and as you saw in the video is just super meticulous friendly and knowledgeable so highly recommend him if you're in fort pierce east coast power systems you can find him at 772-216-6098 awesome guy the sound shield we, we showed you a little bit of what the difference is between the sound shield now with and without it on. Uh, once we get to a quieter anchorage, we're gonna try to do some comparisons of with and without the sound shield from different angles on the boat. So we'll try to do another video showing with and without for those of you considering if a sound shield is worth the effort or not. What did we do with the old generator? Uh, we ended up gifting it to Captain Chris. Uh, he runs an in, he has a classroom out of his home in Vero Beach and we did four days of classroom training with him and through the process got to know him and Elise. And we did a interview with them that you can go and check out. But in his boat mechanics class, he will now be using our generator as a sample. So we're super excited that the generator will have a training life going forward. And uh, speaking of Captain Chris, we integrated some of his amazing uh, commentary from the ground of the haul out. I have now watched that video probably about six times and every time I mesmerized with it. He just did a fantastic job with that and he has given us permission to publish that in whole. So check out th uh, that video as well. We're gonna try to put that up soon after this one. If you wanna see the whole thing, you'll learn a lot about boats, yards, haul outs, Trains. Uh, you'll learn so much from him that we didn't weren't able to include and, in and this it's video. Just relaxing to watch. And he's just a wonderful commentator. So that wraps up the generator install and replacement project. It was a multi-month-long process with all the pieces to come together and multi-stops. So it took us a while to get this all together. So see you on down the waterway.